Another thing that's weird. This is why, by the way, your teams must be a nightmare for the kid who's trying to learn CS history through like Liquipedia, because he's going to come to the heroic team and be like, "Oh, Glaive's the IGL." Like, no, it's not going to know. He's going to come to this team. He's going to go. Cadian and Valdir played together. I wonder what it was like for Valdir being under Cadian's in-game leadership. You know what I mean? Like, none of these teams are going to make any sense, Valdir. So I'm going to ask the question that's the other way around from that, which is, what was it like to have Cadian as your opera? Because now it's weird. Now he is just an IGL. Like, one thing I'll give credit to him, by the way, is he's actually committed to the role. But now he's now he feels like a different player to me. I feel like I have to delete the part of his history before he was an IGL. So who the fuck was the Cadian you got in North? Um, I don't even remember what team he played on when we took him. Was it the Rogue team? It might have been that like weird Rogue team. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Maybe the one that was like a mix of like American and fucking European players. Maybe. Yeah. You know, obviously Cadian wasn't on on the biggest Danish teams back then, so I felt like we primarily took him um, to take like a chance on someone. I think he really proved himself during the Rogue times. You know, they also um, were close to qualifying for the major back then, I believe, and you know he. He had played pretty good individually as well with the AWP. Uh, and obviously we needed an in-game leader, so I think we just decided to jump into it. But I remember when we got Kaden into the team, the team was already in such a big disarray that, you know, we had so many problems, so I felt like we never got a clean start. You know, people didn't have a lot of motivation for different reasons. Um, and there was just a lot of... Uh, like, people were really divided in the team. So I really never feel like we got a chance to play like again from like a fresh start where everybody's putting 100% effort into it. Um, and yeah, so I think it kind of turned out badly, but I have nothing but respect for what he did in Heroic. And I think he really proved that he can be like a top tier in-game leader if he has the right team around him. What was, um, because one thing I wondered about at that period of time was, obviously, like you say, he was actually quite a controversial figure. Like a lot of people in the Danish scene for whatever past baggage reasons didn't like him. And he sort of, that's why he spent a lot of his career going to international teams that people don't know. But the funny thing is now, I actually think he's sort of like rewritten his whole career. Like now, as an in-game leader, he's got quite a cool storyline. I think people pull for him, aside from the obvious controversy the last few years but I think aside from that he's sort of a feel-good story people like that he's become a pretty good IGL this is a question I would have because he's obviously someone else who went through this path we're talking about he used to be I mean probably the most extreme example of like a star he was an author he was just a guy who just watches the crosshair now he's been an IGL as well trying to understand the game a lot how do you think he's changed since he played with you and, and was the guy who came to you was he someone could you tell he had to, he'd had like sort of a bit of a tortured career and he because I always also got the vibe with him by the way that like he's super grateful to sort of get this last chance to succeed for after maybe he thought it was never going to come you know yeah I think it was but I think the most important thing is probably having the right team around him you know I think he works best with um, uh, like a, a team full of young people you know who's willing to listen to him 100% you know where he can like control how they play uh, and I think he, he has that in Heroic you know he has some really good players there um, but yeah I think he's also just from the role he plays he probably isn't he the only one apart from Fallen who in-game leads while he plays the orb? Maybe Nitro as well did it in Liquid at some periods of time. But you know that that's a tricky. It's very thing rare, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really tricky thing to do because obviously the the orb role is such like impactful in the team. So you really wanna like you really wanna be putting up the numbers at the same time as you need to be putting out the the the, the good amount of calls, right? So yeah, it's a tough role, and and I think that's why. So few people are actually doing it because, you know, it's really tough. Uh, but I think he he probably was really grateful he got the chance in, in Heroic and then being able to turn that team into like a world-class team is, is probably something that, that, you know, he's really proud of. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then or, you know, be a pleb and don't.